Hedda Gabler is, I think, Ibsen's masterpiece. It's an extraordinary concentrated work in four acts, and each act is shorter than the one before. So you get this incredible sense of headlong disaster. The story of Hedda Gabler is quite simple. She's just returned from her honeymoon. She's married an academic uh, called Tasman, and they've moved into their new home. And there are these three men kind of orbiting around Hedda, her husband, who she's dissatisfied with, her old flame, and this slightly seedy judge. And it's about what happens between those people uh, over two days in September. Ibsen's play at the time he wrote it in the late 19th century was a very radical play because it, it was about this incredible woman, Hedda Gabler, who has these deep wants and needs that aren't satisfied. And she's both a coward and very brave. She's a very contradictory character. I think that's the, the crucial thing about Hedda Gabler. The marvel of Hedda as a character is that she is alternately vastly unpleasant and unsympathetic and then suddenly she does something or says something that you think I just my heart aches for for this woman but she's so recognizable so alive in the way that um, some of Shakespeare's characters have a sort of independent existence. In the earlier plays, what you see is Ibsen concentrating on female characters as his kind of central characters. Later, he starts going on to middle-aged men and, and older men. Master builder. A man is at a crisis moment in his life where his marriage isn't really working, his business is changing, and he's feeling death not that far away. When suddenly appears this extremely attractive but also sort of visionary young woman who says that she's always been obsessed with him. And the story of the play really is about her trying almost to shock him back into life. What it kind of shows is the, the appeal of that but also the sort of disaster of that, the impossibility of that, if you like. It functions like a psychological thriller with Ibsen, exploring all these quite wacky, crazy themes, but also really essential, eternal themes. But it becomes, in a way, a, a power play between them. You know, they, there's a game. He's trying to work out what she wants, what is she, what she after. So I think there's, it explores aspects of gender power play, if you like. There's another thing in the play which is this notion of the, the younger generation knocking on the door, which is kind of an inevitable part of, of, of growing into middle age and, and older. Ibsen's kind of working out how do you grow old? <laughs> how do you grow old and be true to yourself? And it also dramatises the way that even the best marriage can go dead, can kind of turn to ash. There's a extraordinary scene of a marriage that's become bruised over time and two people who once are, have loved each other but are now unable to really find um, a connection. So I think Ibsen's interested in what are the connections, the intimate connections that we make or we fail to make. These plays are fantastically resonant still in all sorts of interesting ways. And I think that what he did is he looked at what was, what was happening in contemporary everyday life and tried to examine it and explore it and shed light on stuff that was, that was hidden and that was, that was dark. That's fundamental to his modernity, I suppose. Um, is he's saying, we can see what's happening on the surface, but what's really going on, on, on underneath? And that still resonates to us today.